My name is uh, Ulf Birkendal. I work at Copenhagen University Hospital, Rigshospitalet, uh, Department of Clinical Genetics, and we have been using uh, nanopore sequencing to look at uh, hypermethylation in my myotonic dystrophy type 1 patients. So uh, myotonic dystrophy type 1 or DM1 uh, is a multisystemic disorder, but the primary findings are muscle generation and uh, weakness and myotonia. DM1 can be congenital or it can have a disease debut in all age group and it is the most common adult uh, onset muscular dystrophy. The genetic background of DM1 is an expansion of a CTG repeat in the 3 prime UTR of the DMPK gene, where it directly alters the transcription of DMPK and its neighboring genes. But the DMPK transcript also becomes a toxic gain of function mRNA that leads to splicing, deregulation, and leads to this uh, multisystemic disorder. Low 37 CTG is considered normal, but if it expands beyond that, it becomes unstable and results in a DM1 phenotype if it expands beyond 50 repeats. The repeat is unstable in both meiosis and mitosis, so it can expand over generations uh, and during the lifespan of an individual. Repeat interruptions are generally uh, are found to uh, stabilize the repeat, uh, but this uh, effect may be underexplored. Longer repeats uh, generally result in worse phenotype, uh, but in recent years it has become clear that the CPG island uh, around the repeat may become hypermethylated in DM1 patients, and that this also affects the phenotype. So. Uh, The aim with uh, this study uh, was to determine if we can use nanopore sequencing to get a more detailed image uh, of the CTG repeat and the, uh, and the uh, surrounding methylation. And ultimately what we would like uh, is to provide a better diagnostic uh, for our DM1 patients. Traditionally, uh, diagnostics of the M1 patient has been done by sudden blooding, uh, but this is quite a laborious technique and has generally been replaced by a triplet prime PCR. Both methods can detect expansion of the repeat, uh, not with great precision, and can only uh, detect repeat interruptions in, in certain cases. We and others have uh, previously looked at methylation in DM1 patients. Um, and from our cohort, uh, which was analyzed uh, initially with bisulfide pyro sequencing, we selected four hypermethylated patients and four controls. And uh, we analyzed these first uh, using uh, methylation epic arrays and since uh, with nanopore sequencing. The EPIC array uh, has uh, around 850,000 data points at CPG sites uh, throughout the genome. And uh, 22 of these are found in the DMPK CPG island. The uh, dotted line in the, uh, in the figure here uh, represents the uh, CPG site. Uh, so it represents the uh, uh, CPG uh, repeat. And uh, quite clearly, we see uh, hypermethylation uh, uh, surrounding the repeat uh, in the patients, uh, while the samples are generally highly methylated uh, further away from the, from the repeat. The nanopore sequencing uh, was carried out on the uh, MinIron uh, using the Cas9 sequencing kit for targeting. Uh, we got very good uh, coverage in patient 1 and 3, uh, while it was somewhat low in 2 and 4. And this is likely because the samples are quite old and has been sitting in the freezer for several years. Uh, but we were able to carry out all the intended, uh, intended analyses. So first we looked at the uh, repeat length using the program STRIKE uh, mm -hmm. and we were able to determine both the progenitor allele, which is defined by the uh, shortest repeat. Uh, we determined the uh, model repeat length uh, and were able to assess uh, the somatic uh, mosaicism. 
And uh, as seen from the figure here, patient one uh, has the uh, shortest uh, mosaicism range. And this is uh, this patient is also uh, both the youngest, uh, 16 years of age, and is known from triplet prime PCR to carry repeat interruptions. So this was uh, uh, expected. We then uh, carried out uh, methylation detection using three different programs, uh, Megalodon, Nanopolis, and Deep Signal. And as seen here, uh, they uh, have a very good uh, correlation. Uh, and what we've done is, is to, to uh, uh, take an average from these uh, results. Mm -hmm. The blue line uh, shown in the figure here uh, is uh, EPIC array data. Uh, and we see that we have a very good correlation between uh, the data sets, uh, but obviously we get um, uh, the nanopore data provides a much greater resolution as we get data from all the CPG sites. For the patients, uh, the data looks like uh, this for two of them. Uh, again, we see an overall great correlation with the EPIC data. And, uh, and we can show the uh, hypermethylation uh, around the, the uh, CTG repeat. Uh, where, where this becomes uh, more interesting, though, is when we dive deeper into the data and utilize uh, the long reads from the nanopore uh, to analyze uh, the two alleles individually. In our case, this is quite straightforward as we can separate the reads uh, on the uh, repeat size and hereby uh, we can clearly see that uh, all the hypermethylation takes place on the expanded allele, uh, which is uh, marked in, in red, um, while the normal allele is uh, virtually unmethylated uh, around the CTG repeat. Furthermore, we can see, especially in patient three, that what seems like a, a, a minor uh, decrease in the signal at EPIC array data uh, downstream of the repeat actually corresponds to a profound hypermethylation at the expanded allele. Uh, looking even closer at the data, we can analyze uh, on a single reads uh, from the nanopolis data and for instance, see uh, the number of methylated CPG sites uh, on a specific DNA molecule. Uh, here, the area uh, close to the uh, CTG repeat uh, is shown uh, for patient three, and the black dots here indicate uh, a methylated site. Uh, with uh, the disclaimer that these nanopolis data are probability scores and should not be overinterpreted uh, individually, uh, we can, for instance, uh, get an indication that there is a correlation between repeat size and the number of methylated uh, position close to the CTG uh, repeat, uh, but we need some more data to confirm this finding. With that, uh, I would like to conclude uh, that nanopore sequencing is a very useful tool to simultaneously investigate the CTG repeat and methylation status in uh, DM1 patients. It gives a very good representation of the repeat expansion, and I haven't touched uh, much on interruptions, uh, but we do uh, see interruptions uh, in our data. Uh, including in the patients where this was not detected in the trip, uh, triplet prime PCR. And this uh, could indicate that interruptions uh, could be a more general finding, uh, but again, we need more, uh, more uh, sample data uh, to uh, uh, conclude this. Furthermore, uh, we show that uh, hypermethylation uh, can be ascribed to the expanded allele, and we can even analyze uh, this on a single molecule level. And finally, I would like to thank my collaborators and thank all of you for your attention.